Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. We're going to be talking about today the uh, sentencing of CIA, alleged CIA Vault 7 whistleblower Joshua Schulte. If you are not familiar with this story, uh, his alleged whistleblowing to WikiLeaks with the Vault 7 leaks, which was the CIA's entire cyber arsenal, I highly recommend you go back and watch my prior videos on it, which I will link in the video description. So if you just click on the description here, you'll see links. Um, and I also recommend you read my prior articles on this, but I wanna bring up a video I put out. It was a YouTube short last year um, at the end of his trial when he was convicted. This was prior to his sentencing, which concluded his sentencing was yesterday, but this is from last year. Okay, so we have some breaking news in the uh, Vault 7 CIA leak trial. Uh, as you guys know, I've been covering the Joshua Schulte case um, for a while. The first time he was tried for this, uh, it was declared a mistrial. True, there was a mistrial declared. And one of the jurors, she was interviewed on her way out um, in Manhattan, and she said, I don't think he did it you know, I think he's innocent, let the brother go. So the thing is, is that this has been a show trial from the beginning with the CIA basically running the whole thing. This is 100% true. They were in control of the entire trial. If he wanted to get like documents to his lawyer or discuss anything, he literally, they, he, he and his lawyer had to go through a CIA liaison. Including his defense. Every document he wanted to share with his lawyers and they wanted to share with him had to go through a CIA person. So it's a travesty of justice. And uh, today at the retrial, he was just declared guilty on all nine counts. And uh, quite frankly, it's stunning. There is a video on this on my channel. So uh, you can watch that video. Like I said, I'll have it linked in the video description. I did two videos on this and some articles. I want to go to uh, Inner City Press, who did great work on this at the sentencing of CIA leaker Josh Schulte, convicted of giving Vault 7 U.S. malicious hacking tools to WikiLeaks and having CP. Now, as far as the CP thing goes, as you guys know, I'm dubious and suspicious of claims that this was found on him because of the fact that number one i know that they could plant stuff like this on people's devices it's not beyond them to do so but number two i believe his own explanation was that he was running a server where lots of people were posting different things and he was not aware of all of the things being posted by all of the people uh, i think that's what he said i don't remember all of the details um this is like over a year ago when this happened now actually some of this is from four years ago five years ago it's been a long time i don't remember the details but i remember from what i saw and what i read i remember being suspicious of those allegations the doj wanted a life sentence and i recommend the book by uh, matthew russell lee brutal kangaroo WikiLeaks verdict against Josh Schulte and other whistleblowers. Check it out if you haven't. Get the book. It's absolutely worth it. Um, so Judge Furman says, we're here for sentencing. It's been a long road. We're finally here. Um, Judge Furman, I'll defer to judgment on sealing letters. The classified CIA filings will remain classified. Oh, of course. Denton, the um, U.S. attorney, have you notified victims? Denton, we have. Pre-sentencing report. Did you review it, Schulte? Schulte says last week, judge says, let me address defense objections to the factual recitations. I overruled them. Paragraph 39 references the situation that led to his remand while he was on bail. It states it was access to the internet through the cousin, not the material. Judge, the, per the, the paragraphs concerning Schulte's use of the discovery laptop and the materials subsequently found um, on them, I find it very relevant to sentencing. And uh, the pre-sentence report will remain under seal. 
history, the judge says the history is a six due to terror enhancement for a guideline of life imprisonment. There is a disagreement about the application of the enhancement. I find it applies. Judge Furman, I find that his conduct was designed to retaliate against the government, that it was an employee-employer relationship makes no difference. He leaked the entire arsenal of the U.S. cyber tools. That he differs from McVeigh and Osama doesn't matter. He lied to the FBI, and in his counseled interviews with the U.S. Attorney's Office, he used his sophisticated knowledge to commit his espionage offenses. He abuses his position in charge of the Atlassian suite. The enhancement applies. Schulte's lawyer says, I will be arguing for a substantial downward variance. The judge says, I'll hear from the government, then Schulte's counsel, and finally, Mr. Schulte himself, should he choose to speak. And so Denton says, uh, the court knows this defendant. Since he represented himself, the court saw his behavior and who he is. You heard, we told you to stop, but you did. He violated protective orders. It is no small thing for DOJ to ask for a life sentence. But he is unique. Oh, please. Uh, like I said, familiarize yourself with the story if you're not familiar with it. Go back and watch my videos to get the full understanding of the fact that they have actually no idea what happened here. Um, now... They say there's a need for incapacitation. He has extraordinary computer skills and has a history of leaking. The judge says, at what point do those risks dissipate? At some point, his information is no longer ripe. In prison, his computer skills will atrophy. You catch my drift. And then uh, they, they still want him in special administrative measures. Denton says some of his information will persist. The identity of covert agents in the CIA, he tried to publish it in filings. It has happened. Those, uh, these information will remain sensitive as long as those operatives are alive. Uh-huh. The judge says some have called the T-enhancement taking a wrecking ball to the sentencing guidelines. Can you address that? Denton, it reflects the seriousness of the T crimes. Congress decided this in the history enhancement. It's hard to rehabilitate. Judge, what about restitution? Denton, will calculate in 90 days. Schulte's lawyer, what is the least necessary punishment here? This is a difficult case. Schulte has certainly been convicted of very serious crimes. Is he capable of redemption? Yes, the conditions of confinement have been so debilitating, he's unlikely to do this again. He still has hopes and dreams, the simple things in life, a face-to-face -face meeting with a loved one, a private conversation, the sun on his face. Lawyer, has he forfeited all this forever? We say no, we are not relitigating the special administrative measures. His torturous conditions go beyond what he did the court told the MDC, you have to consider humanity. Yeah, they were holding him in torturous conditions um, in the prison there in Manhattan. They had him bolted to the floor naked in special administrative measures, meaning he can't talk to anybody, can't talk to even family members. It's disgusting. His lawyer, it has been torture, locked down 23 hours a day. His lights are on all the time, nonstop white noise. Um, they've done this to other political prisoners that when they try, they're trying to literally like mentally break them. Okay. It, it's cruel and unusual punishment. We held up his pre-sentencing report to the glass so he could read it. They skip his commissary. No entertainment. It's not part of the special administrative measures. He gets mail months late. A life sentence means he can never see his family. Judge, you say without enhancement, it'll be 210 months. I calculate 310. If you subtract the points from groups, it's 224 to 405 months. Opine, Schulte's lawyer, you're asking me to do math on the spot. Even 405 months is not life imprisonment. His lawyer says, I was in a hearing in the other courthouse recently. Judge Hellerstein eliminated the movement across to criminal history six months, uh, criminal history six. Uh, Denton, any math? Denton, we agree on the math. Judge, forfeiture. Schulte's lawyer, we haven't had the chance to speak about it. I only got it this afternoon. We oppose forfeiting any hard drive with his resume on it. 
His lawyer says some of the devices seized are not related to the offenses. The judge says, I think I have to impose forfeiture along with the sentencing. Unreal. Judge says, Schulte, if you'd like to speak before I sentence you, this is your chance. Schulte says, I have 25 to 30 minutes if the court allows it. Uh, the judge says, go ahead. Schulte says, I have been tortured worse than any other prisoner in the Western Hemisphere. I have no access to the library. Instead of 300 monthly phone minutes, I am given 30. I am restricted in mail. The FBI sees as much of it. I have no access to religious, uh, so he doesn't, he's not allowed to have any uh, access to any religious services. The federal government tortures me 24-7, white noise and solitary confinement. The window is blacked out. When I am offered access to law library, I have to urinate and defecate on the floor. I am left there for nine hours. I was left with sewage. I have been locked in my torture cage with rodent excrement. Ice accumulates near the window. I wash my clothes in my toilet. I'm forced to eat with bare hands like an animal. They lock you down. They look down on you like you're not human. We are shown off like a zoo. He says that they'd say, there's El Chapo. There's the guy who ran over these people on West Side Highway. This is New York City's very own Auschwitz. Dickens said solitary confinement eats the prisoner from the inside out. Only the SS could dream of this. Concentration camp is an apt name for my confinement. It's mental torture. Victor Frankl, I relate to. Nelson Mandela wrote about solitary. He begged for its reversal. He wrote, every hour seemed like a year. I relished conversation with a cockroach. I do that too. It doesn't even seem crazy after a while. As a result of my torture by this government, there are fewer blood vessels in my brain. History will side with me. I am suffering a 30-year trial penalty. I was denied discovery material, including forensic imaging. They say I stole from a third server, but did not give me access to it. DOJ seeks to tell all. Those who go to trial will be punished. The district courts don't follow the 937 guidelines, worse than the CP guidelines. The uh, Second Circuit has expressed doubts in dictum. Follow the other courts. Probation proposes five times the average. WikiLeaks uh, released, and then he starts talking about WikiLeaks released Confluence, which the CIA described in 302s as insignificant. Uh, we should have access, but we're denied. The CIA has no idea what was taken. Protocol requires them to scrap everything and start over. That should not be relied on. It is disgusting, to, and uh, Schulte says it is disgusting to compare this case to Pearl Harbor. The truly difficult question for the court today is how do you quantify torture? How much credit would a man in Auschwitz receive? What about New York City's Auschwitz? The BOP is a rogue agency that will never be reined in until those tortured get time served. They, BOP, will leap to obey. Until then, they'll take pride in their concentration camps. BOP will torture me. They invite you to join them. He's, he goes on to say BOP violates the Torah and all principles. I asked this court to reject the espionage guidelines. I asked for time served. So he spoke for 39 minutes. Um, the judge says that a substantial sentence is warranted. Um, he's, he goes on to say that the damage was catastrophic to national security. No, you were just embarrassed is what happened. He says it's no exaggeration to call it a digital Pearl Harbor. It was not a blowing the whistle. He was motivated by anger, spite, and perceived grievance. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says that he had no defense and expressed no remorse at the trial and that he uh, demonstrated a desire to inflict harm. He said when he was in the MCC, he tried to leak information and declared an information war on the United States. So he gave him 40 years in prison and has not addressed the torture that Schulte was subjected to. Now, moving to some of my articles on this, um, these are from 
the case. This is February of 2020. There are two critically important legal cases playing out right now with massive implications for the notions of freedom of the press, as well as the line between protecting national security and legitimate secrecy versus the public's need and right to know. Now, we get into some of the things here, but I, and again, read my, watch my videos on this, read the articles. If you read them, you'll see that throughout the trial, he was sort of denied the ability to really present a proper defense. Um, this article is from March 5th of 2020. Again, going over the case, there's a lot of very good links here that has a transcript and exhibit library and detailed master timeline color coded that you can. So like there's a lot of stuff here that is helpful for people if you are interested in understanding what actually happened here. All right. And then finally, the third article from March 10 of 2020, CIA vault leaks trial ends in hung jury. What of Julian Assange? This was before they retried him. Yeah, it's wild. And again, I highly recommend that you guys read this stuff. It is, it's just crazy what happened. And if you weren't following it as it was happening uh, in real time, then I guess you don't really understand uh, everything that happened there and just how crazy it was. So he has been sentenced to 40 years today and presumably he'll still be under the same conditions. So I'm interested to know what you guys think. Have you heard of Vault 7? Do you understand the implications of what came out, what we learned about the CIA, what capabilities we learned they had, and then all of the other things that happen? I want to know what you guys think of that um, and what you think of the sentencing. Uh, that's all I have for now, guys. Have a good day.